Good morning, everyone, and welcome to join on this webinar about how to beat imposter syndrome. Our professional today will be Margareta Madures, and we will give you a few moments before we begin, just so that everyone can come online. Good morning. Before we be begin, I want to remind you that your microphones are on mute, and they will be kept on mute so that our professional can concentrate on the presentation. If you have any questions, thoughts, you are, you are free to share them in the chat. Or if you want to remain anonymous, you can also use the Q&A section to reach us on this end. For those who, who are online who are not familiar with Onti, I want to remind you that Onti offers confidential one-to-one -one meetings with our very own Onti professionals who will help you tackle everyday issues before they become too big and cause even bigger problems. And Margareta is actually one of our experts here giving us this presentation today. Uh, let's wait just a few moments so that everyone can come online and before we begin with the actual presentations. So if you have any questions or, or ideas or thoughts, you are absolutely free to share them in the Q&A and or in the chat box. And you can reach those at the bottom of the screen. But hey, time is ticking. It's two minutes past 10. So I guess we will give the floor to our experts. So Margaret, the stage is yours. Take it away. Thank you so much, Mikael. Okay, so great to have you all here, and I'm very happy to be here myself. So as you all know, we're going to be talking about imposter syndrome today. And before, um, so let's talk a little bit about the agenda. So first, I'm going to help you understand what imposter syndrome actually is. And then we discuss shortly where it stems from and how it impacts everyday life. Then we're gonna be actually diving a little bit into how to deal with it. For example, by um, noticing a couple of keys to navigating imposter syndrome and how to deal with it in an everyday life. And finally, we might have a couple of minutes for questions if you have any. A little bit about me. Um, my name is Margarita Maduris. I hold a master's degree in clinical psychology. I have also completed a training in solution-focused brief therapy. I'm a relaxation therapist. I offer private counseling, and I've been working through ONTI with clients for over three years now, like um, quite a lot of hours of experience by now. So let's dive right into it. What is imposter syndrome? So imposter syndrome is generally defined as the feeling of being an imposter, just as the name implies. The thing is that usually people aren't actually imposters, however. So it is this, that this person is suffering from imposter syndrome and is kind of convinced that they have somehow managed to get their way into um, a job or that kind of position without actually deserving to be there. And as a result, they have a pretty strong fear of being found out because if you don't deserve to be here, they might find out that you don't and then they decide to kick you out or something like that, which causes a lot of anxiety for a lot of people. It is not, in fact, a mental health diagnosis. It is a collection of ways of thinking and acting um, that, um, that make a, a lot of people feel this in this particular way. So it's not a, it's not a diagnosis, but a lot of people experiences, experience it. Okay, so let's look at this one here. Um, maybe you recognize some of these thoughts. I got the job by mistake or I got it by luck. I'm not as competent as others while they are. I don't belong here, I'm wrong here. 
or I'll be fined out and exposed soon. Do you recognize any of these thoughts? Chances are you are suffering from imposter syndrome. It is natural to think about um, whether um, this is like whether you, it is natural to have doubts sometimes. Um, but of course, when this, these types of thoughts are taking over and they're constantly making you anxious, that's when things starting to be a little more critical and maybe you should start taking action against these types of thoughts. So what generally is also um, a shared experience in this kind of phenomenon is that there is a huge difference between the inner experience of that person versus what others see, um, especially the people surrounding that person. So quite often what we see is that people have very high imposter syndrome thoughts, but the people surrounding them don't think about that at all. They don't think that this person is an imposter or that they don't deserve to be there. So where does it come from? The syndrome is based in insecurity about this yourself, about the suitability in your present situation. And the background is often in lays in childhood as so as so often. And often this is the case for people who have been who've whose successes have not necessarily been validated as much as they perhaps should have been by their parents or guardians or other um, influential figures in their life in their childhood. So that it can also mean that they have their successes have been taken for granted or that they've, their successes have constantly been compared to other people who might have been more successful. So how does it impact everyday life? There's a variety of ways in which this, of course, influences your daily life experience. And one way that it impacts is, um, can be displayed in something like this cycle, that, that imposter thinking cycle. So we usually start with a challenge, whether it is ongoing challenge at work, just being under pressure on a regular basis, but also punctually, we have a moment of more stress. That um, elicits fear or doubt about survival, because if you secretly think that you're not actually supposed to be there, of course, that might make you be more scared about being found out because, um, because the challenge puts you under extra pressure. As a result, a lot of people experience fear, um, um, stress symptoms, and basically anything that can be categorized under stress, but it often impacts our thinking. So we start wondering a lot, okay, oh dear, now it's, that's gonna be it for me. Like I'm gonna be found out. They're gonna see finally how badly suited I am for the situation and I'm gonna lose my job or I'm gonna be in trouble and everyone's gonna be reacting negatively. To, um, about this. So as a, in order to prevent this, a lot of people with this type of thinking pattern try to cope by being either overprepared, putting on an extraordinary amount of work, um, an amount of work that is overly like too much. Um, uh, while on the other hand, some another part of the group might end up procrastinating for a long time before coming to those last final moments before whatever event is expected. You're gonna scramble and try to finish all the work within a very short period of time. Of course, all of this is very stressful. So as a result, often the person is quite successful 
which is in complete contrast to what they themselves think about the situation. Because they, they might actively hear the supervisor or the colleagues tell them, hey, this has been really great. You've been doing such good work. But basically, they don't even hear that. They deny it. They think that it has other reasons why the people might say such things about their work. And it has very little to do with the actual output of whatever they have been working on. And as a final result, um, we have um, yeah, this kind of interpretation of the good feedback as, well, I must have been just lucky or they just like me. So and that's why they've given me that good feedback, not because my work's actually that good. That kind of work can be expected from anyone. Like I just did the bare minimum. Whereas other people might absolutely disagree with these types of thoughts if you were to tell them about them. So here are a couple of so-called operating models of the imposter. The imposter is, of course, not real because you're most likely not an imposter. First of all, work addiction. So that the feeling that you have to put in constant work um, in order to, so, um, to maintain um, your position, maintain your standing, maintain your, your um, role in your environment. Um, then also as a, when positive feedback comes or you see fairly um, objective positive results, you're detaching yourself from it. You might see it on paper, you can verbalize it, you can rationally talk about it, but it doesn't feel like a success. The other model is excessive humbleness. So again, somebody gives you feedback and it's really difficult just to say, yes, thank you. I did put in a lot of effort. Usually it's then, oh no, it was nothing. Um, everybody, anybody could have done this. And if things go smoothly, it is because they aren't putting enough effort into it, or as I said, anybody could do it. And finally, there's the idea that they are social char charmer, right? An imposter um, can like make people think positively about something that actually isn't true. So they think of themselves as a socially gifted top performer. And they believe, they believe that the feedback, the positive feedback that they received is a result of that and not their skills and performance. It's quite interesting. And what does it look like at work? So it is often the very goal-oriented and demanding not nature of the working life that feeds into this difficulty, right? If constantly it is expected of you to put in a lot of work, somebody with imposter syndrome exact follows this kind of expectations, possibly even more than other colleagues would. Then, um, Often what we experience is that if you're starting a new position or your environment or work changes, that imposter beliefs get stronger. That's to an extent quite normal, right? When we are in, in a new environment, when things change, it is normal for us to be a little bit insecure. But with imposter syndrome, it, it's, it's even stronger than that. And again, we are hoping for compliments, right? A lot of the time we're trying to avoid difficulty by putting on a lot of work and hoping that people will notice and say, hey, that was great. But once these kinds of comments and compliments come, it is very difficult to accept them. Then also very reluctant to advance the career. Because of your outstanding work, you might be offered an advancement in your work. But because you think that secretly you don't even belong in the position where you are right now, you're very reluctant to take that offer or you feel that you really shouldn't because then it's going to be even more obvious 
um, how lacking you might be. And also we have that difficult relationship with, with your predecessor. <laughs> Um, and it's so on the one hand, you feel like, hey, I would like to get some more support because you're feeling so insecure. Of course, it would be nice to have someone to help you. But on the other hand, you don't want to ask too many questions, ask for too much help and advice because then they might catch on. Right. So it's it's a tricky situation. On the one hand, you feel insecure. And on the other hand, you don't feel like you should be asking for help too much or at all in some cases. So let's come to the question. So how do you then cope with imposter syndrome? Now we've talked about the problem in length and I'm sure a lot of you have realized, okay, this is actually something that I'm struggling with. And uh, yeah, so let's see how one can deal with it. So the first thing, as in most interventions in mental well-being, mental health, is to identify the thinking pattern. So what I, I mean by that is that um, it is good to understand when the imposter thinking happens. So something like, I should know this. It would be good rather than maybe judging yourself for... Um, maybe not knowing something, exploring why, why it is that you have these thoughts. Explore what it is in your thinking that drives you to exceed your own resources, your own boundaries again and again. In what way do you demand more of yourself than um, maybe necessarily reasonable? One way to phrase this or reframe this is to ask yourself, would I expect this from a good friend or a nice colleague? If the answer is no, chances are you are putting higher expectations on yourself than is absolutely necessary. So you can combat that by limiting and prioritizing tasks more strictly, scheduling realistically, taking on an emotional distance from work. So I de you define the type and amount of work that you want to do more clearly and thereby making it easier to know when to stop when you're maybe focusing on details and getting into perfectionism. When, you, when it's more defined, it's easier to know, okay, this is actually all that I'm meant to do. Then also create routines that help you stick to the plans. Take breaks. I know when you're feeling stressed and rushed, it often feels that breaks are not in the budget. But believe me, in the long term, you'll thank yourself for taking breaks because it's going to allow yourself to continue more sustainably in, a, in the long term. And finally, that really difficult part is to learn and let go of unfinished business. Sometimes you're not going to be able to finish everything. And this is a tough one. I work with, <laughs> with a lot of clients who struggle with that. So I'm absolutely with you when you think that's, whoa, that's, that's too tricky. Okay, next one. Everyone else is able to, to do it. Really? Um, so first of all, recognize the self-critical thought and ask yourself, maybe be a bit challenging of this thought. Like, is that really the case? Like, do really all others always know what to do? Probably not. Um, and also be a little bit more self-compassionate about it. It's first of all, okay to look at these actions realistically, but also with this type of self-compassion. Being angry at yourself and judging yourself harshly Let's be real, has it really brought you very much happiness or success in the past? Or has this been an extra stress that you are putting on yourself? So see if you can maybe be a bit more self-compassionate on yourself. For example, you could see, all right, if we were using that example from the last point, what would I say to a friend in the exact same position? 
Would I judge them? Would I say, wow, you really were lazy. You were not putting on in enough effort. Or would you more likely say something of the, in the lines of, hey, you, you're allowed to make mistakes. It's okay. Sometimes you just feel a bit less energetic than others. And it's okay and to rest and take breaks. And then the final type of thought is soon someone will notice. Recognize and listen to the concern, right? Because this idea, this thought clearly comes from fear, the fear of being exposed and then maybe um, having some kind of punishment, i.e. losing your job or getting into trouble resulting from that exposure. So first of all, I want you to listen to that thought, not in the sense of, yes, this is definitely gonna happen, but just notice it, notice that it's happening and then help yourself, help your nervous system to calm down a little bit. And one way to do that is to breathe. Sounds so simple and it really kind of is, but um, it, I do recommend it. So breathe through it. And then once you feel that you've calmed down a little bit, you can use breathing techniques, you can use guided meditations, you can take a walk in the office, outside the office, take a chat with a colleague, anything that helps you calm down a little bit. Get Once you feel, okay, you feel a little steadier, then get back onto it. So what do you think? Do you recognize any imposter thoughts in yourself? So here's a couple of questions you might ask yourself. When did you last think you were an imposter? Did you, were you able then, or do you think you'll be able in the future to recognize or acknowledge that this is imposter thinking? Remind yourself that this happens sometimes and it happens to the most successful people. Like I work with people from all kinds of corporate levels and honestly, everyone can have imposter syndrome, which is another indicator that it usually doesn't have anything to do with skill level. Okay, once you notice it, stop, breathe, notice the ground under your feet, exhale slowly and let yourself feel more grounded, okay? It's gonna be okay. Allow worried thoughts to come and pass, might take a while, might not be always work, that's okay. But don't try uh, to stop them or get caught up in them too much. The good thing about feelings is that they come and they go. They will not persist forever until infinity, right? So you might feel stressed out in this very situation. You might feel scared and you might feel like a fraud, but it's gonna pass. There's going to be moments in the future when you don't feel like this. Perhaps state to yourself once more that there is no danger, that the chances of you being fired for not putting on quite as much effort are usually pretty low. Decide what your next step could be and then get on it, get working, start. Because often people with imposter thoughts also have really high standards for themselves, leading to perfectionism. And then they find it quite difficult to even start, which makes it more difficult because time pressure increases and so on. So get going, start, and don't think too much about doing it perfectly right away. Starting sometimes is better than taking too long to getting the per perfect um, plan in place. So here's a couple more strategies that you can try out. So again, practice some skills to calm yourself down and focus on relaxation and recovery in and outside of work. Breaks, getting off work on time, taking time off after work, to just relax and um, you know, do things that bring you joy. 
practice accepting positive feedback without um, deflection or minimizing. What I mean by that is you don't necessarily have to feel that you deserve a comment or a feedback. Just say thanks. And at some point, you might find it easier to actually feel like you deserve the feedback. And here's a couple of things that I would like you to learn to say. I don't know. I need help. Thank you, especially in regard to feedback. And I knew this. Learn to accept help and support. Thank you, right? Identify your own values. That's going to help you to set boundaries, which is going to help you to feel less of an impostor. Consciously look for your achievements. I recommend um, having one place where you collect your achievements, where whenever you get good feedback, you just write it down, where you write down when you get feedback, when you have a success, when you did think that you did something well, when a friend says something nice, put it there and regularly look at it. So what do you think are your takeaways from this? Um, here are some options. First of all, learn to identify your imposter thinking and thoughts. Help yourself calm down when you notice getting stressed out by these thoughts. Breathe um, and then prioritize and limit tasks so that it's easier to know when you're done and listen to yourself well. And finally, don't feel like that, feel like you, you have to do everything by yourself. Here's my references. And now we have some time for questions, I think, a few minutes. Thank you, Margareta. There is actually a few questions. And I'll pick one of them, being mindful of the time frame here. Uh, there's a question on how does imposter syndrome relate to the notion of reaching a position where you may not be fully competent? So how does one know the difference? Mm. Well, one thing that is, I think, important to understand is that you don't have to always be fully competent when you're just arriving in a new position. There is always going to be, most of the time, there's going to be room for learning and growing. Right. So often what we notice is that we actually, once we find ourselves in the new environment, in the new position, we rapidly learn the things that we might have not had beforehand. So I think don't maybe rather than answering your questions, maybe the way that you were hoping for, I'm going to tell you that um, you don't have to fulfill all the criteria. It's okay. You most likely you'll be able to make up for that while you're there. You're learning. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to have all the answers right away. That's right. And one notion that actually came up also about this topic is that since we are in this hybrid era and most of us are working remotely, we are also missing that personal contact that we used to have at the office. So yeah having that security network around us. So being able to just walk to the colleague and ask if there's something troubling us. So we don't, we don't have that. And with this hybrid era, we are like overly confident about, okay, do I open a Teams chat or do I phone the colleague? Yes. So, so keeping also a low threshold on that one. So that, hey, if there is something troubling you, you need assistance on anything reach out yes there's always someone willing to help very good point thank you yeah yes. hey with that we come to the end and being mindful of the time so thank you for everyone who was attending and listening and thank you for all the comments we will be sending a recording of this webinar to everyone who enrolled for this webinar so you will be able to return to this and revisit this topic but with that we want to wish you a very sunny weekend and, and enjoy your day. And we'll see you with our next webinar later on. Yes, thank you. Thank you and bye.
Bye.